Dante DiMici reporting from the meth lab. I ride the bus in Lake County and beyond. Unlike the typical bus rider, I'm in good physical shape and I have a valid driver's license. I get around several ways, but buses are going to be a bigger part of the future transition picture for everyone, whether we like it or not. Most will not like it. In the city where I used to live, transit buses were referred to as the shame train. To be an American means to be independent, which means driving a vehicle everywhere. No buses, no bicycles, temporary hiatuses from the motorized world is permissible for medical or DUI reasons. But the lapse is definitely lose a turn socially. If someone says they ride the bus to save money for more important things or as part of a bus bike combo, they will be greeted with a blank stare. In the event of reduced circumstances, it is far more acceptable to beg rides, go deeper into debt to keep old Betsy chugging, and in general, to become a criminal for lack of papers. Necessary evils include driving without registration, insurance, licenses, and stealing gas from your neighbor's car. Still, there is a slowly growing number of mostly reluctant people of, who are taking the bus in Lake County. This function falls upon the Lake Transit Authority, a body made up of representatives from the county, cities, and a couple of at-large members. All of these people would rather get multiple root canals without painkillers than ride the bus personally. The authority's main job is to contract with Mark Wall or his successor to run the transit system. This means he designs the routes, keeps the records, writes grants, and most important, contracts with a company to run the buses, preferably with drivers. This company has to follow a few laws and abide by whatever is in their contract, but otherwise it's their show for the length of the contract. Currently, Mark Wall is the administrator for the system. The politicians he reports to on the authority don't know or care about many of the details. The company he contracts with is just management. They hire the employees and are the first contact with the public. They do not own the buses or the facility. They are not entrepreneurs. They are management. Running a transit system is a government department in some places, but Lake County chose to run it with a contractor under a contractor. There are advantages and disadvantages with this approach. The advantage is the bus drivers, mechanics, and dispatchers don't have the same generous pension or medical plans that government employees have, nor are their wages easily compared with our county employees. Conveniently, the county and our two cities have a large measure of plausible denial in matters of civil rights and other laws as far as what goes on with our buses. Finally, any union representative for a separate transit unit would be much weaker 
than one representing most county employees. Now for the disadvantages. The contract management company's only commitment in Lake County is their three-year contract. They have invested no capital in Lake County. They have no incentive to build our bus system or even preserve what is already here. Unless they bring down the wrath of state or federal officials, local politicians will not intervene on behalf of the public. Bus users are not on their radar. The current management company is Paratransit Services, a 501c3 company operating six transit systems in three states. During the few years they have controlled operations, they have done several things that show contempt for our bus riding citizens. On February 17, 2011, Lake County was hit with a freak snowstorm. Every three or four years, the county gets a, a dusting that makes the mountain routes too slippery to run buses on. But on this date, we got hit with a real snowstorm that broke tree limbs unused to snow loads. The county got more than a dusting. As a bus driver, I wanted to know if I could get from one side of the lake to the other. I called the transit number. No answer. I called a friend at work. Between us, we called the sheriff, the highway patrol, the radio station, and Caltrans. The lines were busy, but we finally got through. No responsible party had any information about the bus system. We learned hours later, Lake Transit had shut down completely without notifying anyone. I complained in writing. A day later, Mark Wall had implemented a comprehensive shutdown notification procedure. A little late, as many riders in poor health were left standing in the snow, waiting for Caltrans to clear a path for the buses, buses that were not coming. If the authorities were notified, they could have picked these people up or told them to go back home. But emergency personnel did not know there was a problem for hours. So the sick and the elderly were left freezing in the snow. Paratransit offered a weak excuse that the power was out, so their phone system was down. They could have plugged a handheld right into the wall. They could have used a cell phone. They could have called from home after they locked the transit doors. That is, if they cared. After Wall Street, 8 Main Street, Eight Main Street's lunch in the 2008 financial crash, Paratransit convinced the drivers to give up their annual step raises until the tap opened up again. Since we are a poor county, the starting wage for drivers is low, and many will soon decide that they don't like driving a bus. But for others, there is the lure of more money over the hill, calling those who have some experience. Giving drivers higher pay as they get more experience keeps more of them driving in Lake County. Again, the payoff to the public is greater efficiency, safety, and easy mentoring for new drivers. So they don't have to fake their way through quirks of driving a bus in our unique physical and social environment. About a year ago, we were all informed by people who claimed to know that the recession was over. So the drivers said, great. So 
How about slipping us a few step raises on our next contract? I believe Paratransit said something like, you'll get your first step raise from us when you pry it from our cold dead fingers. Now the drivers realized Paratransit's smooth words were just pillow talk. And they do the strike thing. That's what Paratransit was waiting for. This humble nonprofit manages transit systems in three states. They all joined the crusade against 35 striking drivers. Most runs were canceled for weeks as new hires replaced the old, but it was clear that Paratransit had an unlimited budget from somewhere. The union caved and ended the strike. But wait! Paratransit was still hiring replacement drivers in clear violation of the law. Also, riders are paying the price of reduced route runs with drivers locked out, ready to drive. Paratransit does not get paid for those buses that aren't running. This reality of retaliation is costing them money. Why? What is their agenda? And who is their secret backers? And our bus riders? It looks like losers like us take a back seat to their secret agenda. Apparently their contract with Lake Transit Authority doesn't prevent them from pursuing this agenda that results in sabotaging our bus service and gutting our core of experienced drivers. I think our local politicians need to give the next management contract some pro-rider direction. Yes?